Perfect. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We weren't planning to do this video, um, but with the news of Jamie Fullerton leaving his role today, we just couldn't resist, could we, Harley? We couldn't, no. Uh, Rob messaged me out of the blue. I was still at work and he demanded that we do this video. I didn't, and as always... I, didn't demand. I said, are you around tonight <laughs> to talk about Jamie Fullerton? And you were like, why? <laughs> and I was like, uh, you might need to go on and have a scroll through Twitter. But there we go. As, as, as ever, I've, I've, I've made it. You have, you have, and we all respect that. Um, I, I mean, we've, we've literally planned none of this. It's all really off the cuff. I don't even know Harley's thoughts on it. So what, what do you think about the news? Um, good. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just, just good. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not really worked out for him, has it? And uh, he's he's come in with a um, a doesn't suffer fools lightly attitude, which hasn't worked. I don't think uh, well, he's made the club hasn't suffered that fool lightly. Aha! Very good. Very good. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. But you can you can carry on your point now. <laughs> thank, thank you, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so um, I think he's made a lot of um, enemies on his year here, especially with the fans. Uh, and probably within the club, I would imagine. And I think it's probably the best thing for everyone is we part company. Yeah. Yeah, I think he he came in, spoke a lot about trying to get the right characters and and improving the the kind of the core of the club. And although we won't really ever, I think, know. His, what he implemented sort of throughout the club and, and ways of working. The big thing that we can judge him on is recruitment. And ultimately, the recruitment has seen uh, Walsall stay in the exact same position as when he took over. And it's not good enough. And no, I, absolutely. I think mm. you... you the, the, the big thing about getting the right characters in, you know, I could almost understand if it was a young bit of an untested team that were really given their all each week. But the amount of times that heads have dropped and, you know, the last couple of matches have been, I mean, not that we're going to sort of talk match by match on this, but the last couple of games have been dreadful and players just have down tools. And a big thing about getting the right sort of mentality and, and characters through the door has massively backfired. Yeah, I agree. I mean, to be to his credit, he did find us Carl Rushworth and Jack Earin, two yeah. of our best players. So I will give him that. Um, I think there may be an element of it that Flynn doesn't want Fullerton at the club. He doesn't want someone else's input in a kind of technical director role when it comes to transfers. Yeah. I think mean, that's played its part. Yeah, I mean, it, it'll be interesting because in the statement, I mean, I've... I've I've only read it once, but there was no sort of the search is now underway for a new technical director. So I don't, I don't know. It seems odd because obviously Pominent made such a big thing about I need someone to run the footballing side of things. And yeah, I, I'm wondering what appointment's going to be made to run the footballing side. Um, it, it does feel like I mean, I know, I know we can credit sort of Rushworth and Earring, but if you throw enough shit at a wall, some of it will stick. Like it's, it's, and that's <laughs> how it sort of panned out again. And it's sort of been the Walsall menta like mentality, but the Walsall recruitment in the last few years. And really, I don't, I don't think if you looked at our like transfer windows, you could honestly say, oh yeah, you could notice a big difference because of this guy coming in. Yeah, and um, I think that it's going to be quite a while before we get another kind of director of football. I think Pomlet has probably learned his lesson on that one. I think we moved a bit too quick last year because Pomlet made a promise that he would deliver on a technical director, director of football, yeah. whatever you want to call him. And this is, why, this is why I'm wondering what the next step is because I mm. do feel that making the big point about not having a footballing brain on the board 
like you you kind of you live and die by that comment yeah. and if you then get rid of someone like Fullerton which we've got questions about why and, and all of that which we'll, we will get into but now that there's that apparent footballing brain gone I think it's going to be interesting to see what Pomlet's next step will be. I mean, I'm assuming that there will be a video about it because it is a big bit of news. And I'd be surprised if he didn't do his usual, I just want to address the fans on it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think overall I'm, I'm happy. I was not expecting it at all. No, no. Uh, my one question is, is I haven't had time to properly look over this. Okay. Has Fullerton left his post as technical director and the board or is it just he's left the post of technical director and is he still on the board i don't that, actually know that is a very good question and because they uh, are two separate things aren't they yeah i mean i'd assume that if he's ceasing employment in in the club that they won't want him on the board let's get the mm. statement up right now um confirm that jamie fullerton has left uh, his role at the club during his well it's kind of a bit vague about that um, yeah. but they do end by saying the club would like to place on record it's thanks to Jamie for his dedication hard work and contribution whilst at the club and wishing him all the best for the future so I would I would assume that he's gone gone um, it does sound quite final yeah I will say that but I yeah I, I'm I'm very intrigued to see what what happens because at the moment the statement only includes a comment from Fullerton there's nothing from Pomlet to say yeah you know to give some input or, or some comment on I would like to thank Jamie for this it's it's very much the standard we would like to um, before we get into the q and I've yep. got a question for you oh okay do you think that Pomlet is a bit too hasty in his decision making when it comes to the people he brings into the club. Matt Taylor, Fullerton, Brian um, Dutton, they all were brought in like quite quickly, I think. And maybe he's starting to realise that some of these things might take a bit more time. That's a good question. Um, mm. I mean, you look at Flynn, we moved quite quick on Flynn. And the main reason we probably went for him is because is he was the name everyone was crying out for. Yeah. Um, so what, was it that he was the best target or was it the one that we wanted? Interesting point. I think I have no, no sort of um, concern. Um, yeah, no, no concerns over how quickly they acted on Flynn. And I think it's a good job they did because yeah. I do feel that after after um sort of he he was appointed other jobs became available that yeah. would have been as tempting or would have put sort of maybe also wouldn't have been as high on the priority list um i.e bradford um i think they'd have if he wasn't so in advance talks with walter i think they'd have made a real play for him yeah. potentially i mean I don't, I don't know i'd have no sort of information to back that up at all um I mean, I'm trying to think, there's, there's other clubs in League Two that have, and I think League One that have sort of changed managers recently that may may have considered him. So I think we acted at the right time. I think Fullerton, we don't, I don't know how long that search went on for, I can't remember. But I think it was about eight, I think it was maybe eight weeks. Yeah, but yeah, and I don't, I've, I've, heard a strong rumour as to who was the other person in the run-in that effectively was in the final two with Fullerton. I don't know how good or reliable that information is, but it sounded like it was a well-thought-out process. Um, mm -hmm. The In terms of the appointment of Taylor, I would imagine that things were being worked on behind the scenes before the end of the season. Yeah, Because I think they knew Dutton wasn't staying well before they they kind of announced yeah definitely so I don't yeah I don't know I think with the sort of the overlaps it's difficult to say yes or no um mm. what I do think is though he is like Pomlet is a bit more ruthless than I think we 
may be let on. Yeah. Yeah, I think that is the kind of side to him that he hasn't really shown yet, but he is kind of, he's a businessman at the end of the day. He wants results. I mean, and that is, that's never a bad thing. Clark said he'd shown interest elsewhere and was effectively told to, well, go, um, yeah. which is ruthless. You've then mm. got Taylor. I know he was on a bad run, but some chairman would have stuck it out. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I think. I, I'm not sure on that yet because I, mm. I, I know where you're coming from, but I also think that Taylor, there was a long process before that. Fullerton, eight weeks. Again, it's quite a lengthy process. And oh. Flynn, you kind of, it, it wasn't an unusually short turnaround, in my opinion. Yeah. What, what do you think then? Um. I kind of agree with you. I was just wondering to get your thoughts on that because I think that there is a pattern emerging for me a little bit where we seem to be, the processes seem to be a bit odd. And I think maybe Fullerton has, not Fullerton, um, Pomlet, sorry, has pulled the trigger a little bit early when he's seen something he likes and has gone, yes, I want that. May, maybe it's just kind of, you know, he's never run a football club before, so you're going to make bad decisions yeah. sometimes. And maybe it's him learning from those. I was just kind of asking the question to kind of kind of talk, sound it out and see if there is any kind of anything to it. Well, viewers, comment your thoughts. Exactly. That's, a, that's, a, that's something that people who do YouTube videos say. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, we've got, I mean, there's actually quite a... We've had quite a few questions, but a lot of them are all asking similar things. Um, so I'm just going to start the top and and work down. So David Fieldhouse, has he and the manager fallen out over Rodney? Long contracts, doesn't even look pro standard. Um, but then Dominic Powers has said, where the bell did that come from? I love that, by the way, Dominic. That was a fantastic phrase. Um, what will Pomlet do now? Every season seems to be the start of a new era. Um, and then elsewhere, we've got Sammy, who has said, um, what suddenly has prompted his departure, do you think? So all kind of touching on the same, same thing, basically, why and what's next? So I think, I think I'm going to ask you, we'll go with why first. Why do you think now the trigger's been pulled? Before anyone gets too excited, even though me and Rob both have you know, connections. Neither of us know the answer to this. No, we don't. We I really categorically say we do not know the reason why. We're only speculating. The only thing I can think of is that they watched our last video where we gave such good ideas about how to run things both on and off the pitch that, you know, I'm, I am waiting for the phone to ring. I mean, I am extremely confident they watched this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they'd be stupid not to. Yeah, it's just it's good content at the end of the day. Yeah, we didn't say so ourselves. But yeah, so yeah. what what why do you think this has happened? Um, well, when you look on the face of it, I think it was Vital Warsaw that um, tweeted out that Fullerton joined us in April 2021. We were 18th in the league. He's yeah. left us in April 2022. We're 18th in the league. So there's no improvement. So mm -hmm. that's you know it, it's a results business. And yeah. even if you're not the manager, you know, you're still part of those decisions. I think that he's alienated a lot of people. And I don't think what he has done has worked in terms of the strategy he came in with. I don't think it's made the impact that he wanted it to. And I think he's found the club a lot harder to kind of not so much manipulate, but kind of mould into what he wants it to be. He has made some kind of changes to the academy and we'll never really know, like you said, whether that was for the better or to the detriment. Because the but, amount of time that's going to pass, it kind of... Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's going to be difficult because although he may have made changes and it all goes like swimmingly well, there's going to be too much time now until we see the rewards that a lot of other factors can come in. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, the reason why he's left is 
either because he feels like there's nothing more he can do. You know, he's given it his best shot and it's just a job too much for him. Or Pomlet's just not happy with what he's doing and he wants to go in a different way. They would be my two guesses. It seems, I mean, I've just Googled when he, when he was hired and it was the 13th of April, 2021. So it's been pretty much exactly a year. Exactly a year. Now, I, I wonder whether there's a break clause in the contract because it seems date-wise to be very yeah. precise. Um, fun fact, I was actually at his first game, uh, even though it was behind closed doors. I was reporting on it away at Colchester. Uh, and I, I think I upset Alfie Bates in that, in that game. Um, and I'll tell you why at the end. Um, yeah, so, and I remember on that day, there was a big thing about him coming in. Like a lot of the journalists were sort of looking to find him and you could see him and Pomlet were there talking. Obviously it was an empty stadium, so it was quite obvious where people were, but he came in, there was quite a fanfare about it and about, what he'd done at Palace and that he'd found players like Easy and um, others that have, have come through recently. And it was like, wow, we've got ourselves a real, real guy here. Yeah. But when he came in, my big thing was, all right, well, we've got a link with Crystal Palace now. Where's, where's that link been apart from a pre-season friendly? There's been no yeah. sort of younger players, no academy players, no sort of under 21s that you could go, yeah, that they, they were brought in because of Fullerton's link. The link was Halifax. And yeah. in the nicest way possible, we should be building up a, a relationship with a Premier League club who've got good talented youngsters that need some football. Not and I know I know it has worked out with a couple of players that we have signed from there, but it very much did seem like his contact book was Halifax or ex Halifax yeah. players. And, you know, yeah. what has he achieved at the club? Well, exactly. And I think that that is what it comes down to is someone somewhere, whether it be himself or it be Pomlet and the board, don't think he's achieved anything worthwhile. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, he's the first director of football we've had. He had to make a mark. And he, he hasn't. He, he's kind of left with a bit of a bad taste in our mouths. Yeah. And that's kind of the best you can say about it. I mean, we'll kind of, I think, we'll, we'll carry on going on the why and then what next. And then I kind of want to go back to what he, what his legacy will have been. Yeah. But then... Um, the, the comment about Rodney, I mean, I don't think anyone was particularly thrilled with the signing. And I, I feel that it kind of got to the point that we there was no evidence of, right, we've brought in a better calibre of player. It was, it just felt the same. And unfortunately, when you've got someone who you employ to effectively improve recruitment and improve sort of the feel around the club as well from a footballing point of view, I think it's worse now than it was 12 months ago. I think the only thing that's keeping it together is Flynn. Yeah. Um, I think that Fullerton did a pretty crap job with the recruitment. Yeah, massively. To be honest, because Taylor... You know, he's, it was his first season. He was never going to be, you know, he didn't have a big list of contacts or anything like that. So it, it was a lot of pressure on Fullerton to identify the players and get them over the line. Yeah, and yeah. Rodney, I think, is the best example of why that didn't work because Rodney doesn't work in Flynn's system. And, OK, let's be fair, Flynn hadn't signed at this point. But Rodney didn't work in Taylor's system either. Yeah. It, yeah. I didn't understand that signing because Rodney is essentially a right winger. Flynn played a 4-2-3-1. Yeah. How, that's a right mid who's, who's quite deep. You know? Yeah. It, yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. What he's not, he's not a striker. 
if if you're going to play a two up top, you've got Wilkinson, who's the right sided striker. What was the point of signing Rodney other than to say, oh, we've signed this player? Yeah. And I think yeah, Daryl's yeah. played us for fools there, to be honest. He's got yeah, rid of good. someone who just isn't that good. He's all right. Yeah. I mean, and he could be better in the future, but he's, from what I've seen of him, he's technically not great. I think as well, it, it went back to that thing of we signed a player who wasn't fit. Yeah. And, you know, we needed firepower. And at the moment, the only firepower has come from the fact that Flynn managed to get a song out of Miller and Wilkinson. Yeah. And we weren't supposed to sign Rodney until the summer anyway. It was only because we lost a few players in January that we brought Rodney in. He yeah. was... Because they knew he was, wasn't fit and he was one for the summer, which I still don't understand because he still wouldn't have worked the system. But why get him in January when you could have got someone who was fit and then if Rodney's still available, great, go for him, but you would have backups because Fullerton had this whole thing of if Miller leaves, we have plans A, B, C, D and E. And he said that for every player. Yeah. yeah. And play, yeah. players left. And where was A, B, C, D and E? It felt like we were hiring X because yeah. X was the only one he wanted to join and X was injured. Yeah, it's. Um, I think that's one of the big things that... The, I think looking now kind of on that bit, I think we'll go on to the what has he left behind. Fullerton had, had made a lot of big promises and a lot of big claims yeah. and ultimately did not deliver on m m all of them, most of them. Um, obviously, behind yeah. the scenes, we, don't, we won't know what impact he had, but... You know, the, the, the comment about, oh, if any loan players leave in January, I'll, you know, and, and the, 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 I've got, like I said, a plan A, B, C, D, and D, I'll be calm and all of this. It's, yeah, it just, it just turned out to be words. And it just, it, it's that thing of, oh, come on, like, just don't say it unless you have 100% confidence that you can pull it off. Yeah, and he didn't have one hundred percent confidence that he could pull it off. Well, he, he might have done, but it. No, I think he did. Work. Just didn't pull it off. Because um, when he at the fans forum, he spoke very well, and he did come across as a bit arrogant. But you don't mind that arrogance if you're getting results. No, not at all. And he had that kind of dry Scottish humour, and he was very calm and collected. And you kind of thought, well, he's making all these promises, but. He's saying them in a way where you can see he believes it. So yeah. let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. And we did. Yeah. The, yeah. And I think you, you could almost forgive certain elements of it if there weren't other rumours and bad stories flying around. I mean, very well, even when he was hired, but it didn't take long for stories about bullying and treatment yeah. of, of people at, at other clubs to surface and then obviously it all kicked off again when Miguel Lera left and his missus putting stuff out on social media yeah. and it it all just along with then the the Ash Taylor comments and it just all seemed to be a bit you know this was happening at a time where he ultimately wasn't delivering on on his promises from pre-season and the fans forum and I think I think it was then that really he lost he lost his sort of fan faith in him. Yeah. But it, it, my, my thing is at the moment, I think I'm kind of, I'm still trying to process it all, but I'm, I'm less, right. Less worried about the, the, how, um, Homlet kind of impulsive you were asking earlier, more his judge of character. Yeah. That's my question at the moment because Taylor and Taylor was bought in by Fullerton. A lot of the players have been bought in by Fullerton. Since Fullerton's been in, it's been Fullerton driven. But ultimately, he was hired after an in interview process with Pomlet and the board. 
and it's that that concerns me yeah that's a good point you raise and that reminds me of when we had the kind of ash taylor controversy a few weeks ago and i think it was michael beardmore who said also used to have the no knobhead policy yeah and the last five or six years we've moved away from that yeah and i think he he absolutely hit the nail on the head with that because we've had a lot of bad attitudes we've had a lot of wrong people yeah. in wrong positions over the last few years and you just want to see i want at my football club i want decent people doing the jobs yeah the people and, who, who are nice who are good and, characters and that's what i do feel we have got with flynn yeah absolutely i, I agree with that one i don't think this this isn't a video about flynn but he seems to get the club he seems to get what it's about he seems to get the relationship with the fans he seems to understand I, I I do feel that actually Walsall and Newport are quite similar in terms of, you know, loyal fan base. Yeah. The not the biggest spenders, the kind of from what I know from a couple of Newport fans, like it's a club that is, you know, I mean, not that they're surrounded by, but Welsh football's dominated by bigger clubs. Yeah. And yeah, it, I don't know. I just feel that they are quite similar, almost projects in a way, especially yeah. where picked Newport up from. So, yeah, I do think that Flynn gets the club more. And I I don't know. I just don't think Fullerton did. I think he sort of came in and thought, this would be a breeze. Yeah, definitely. I think he, he made all these kind of sweeping promises. And like I said, he didn't, he didn't deliver on any of them. And I think he, I think he himself has realised that maybe I'm not up to this particular project. Maybe yeah. it's just a step too far. And if he has done that, then you know, fair play to him. It's not easy to admit when you're the wrong man for the wrong for the job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what what happens next then? Do you think more control goes to Flynn or or? different board appointments will be made, potentially. Well, this was a big talking point whilst we were in talks with Flynn, wasn't it? That a lot of fans were concerned that Flynn wouldn't want to work with Fullerton. Yeah. Because under Matt Taylor, you had Fullerton who could essentially control what Taylor did to a certain extent. Yeah. You know, he could say, let's sign these players, let's do that. Yeah. Flynn isn't going to do that. And he's, also, he's a... I think... The fans don't want Flynn to give up that control because he has a proven track record. Yeah, Whereas exactly. Taylor was very much the, it was, right, let's let him find his feet and focus on coaching, focus on the, the team. Whereas Flynn, I think, will want that bigger picture, potentially. Yeah. I mean, I, I would assume so. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I think that, uh, I think, Flynn is more a manager than a head coach, which I always prefer, to be quite honest, because yeah. I like I like a manager to take control and have everything how he wants it. It always kind of reminds me of the kind of Sir Alex days where he was kind of in control of everything at United and he got the club singing. Yeah. And that's what I like. I like one man with one vision. Yeah. Well, of... I, now, this is where I'm going to slightly disagree with you. Okay. I think the reason that it works with Flynn is because there are two men with the same vision. And that's, that's, why, yeah. that's why he's got Hartswell. I do feel that, you know, if, if, if Flynn's bogged down in sort of more of the paperwork side of things or the phone call side of things, that he's got a man on the ground that he can go, I can't do training for a couple of hours because I've got to do X, Y, and Z. That, not saying that he gets distracted. I'm pretty sure it would be the same for any manager. But yeah. he's got someone, boots on the ground, that will be pulling the players in the same direction as what and, Flynn would want. And you know what, Rob? That is a brilliant point. I didn't think of that, but that is... that is you, You've done well there. Mic drop moment. I'm on. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And... I think it's so, so good that we got Hatswell as well as Flynn. 
because they've worked together before they they know how each other operates and yeah you're absolutely you are spot on it's two men working to the same kind of idea the same end goal and if we get a director of football in or a technical director i think that we take our time with it we don't promise the fans anything we just no, say we're just, working on it i wouldn't we're working on it. we're going to start it, we're, it, we're it, looking into it i don't even think they need to say that i think it's i think it's one of those that if the right person became available you get them but i, I yeah. think if you actively try and recruit for this sort of role you're going to get a short list of x amount of applicants and then you suddenly start to whittle down from there I don't think it should be an active recruitment. I think it should be a, if the right person comes available, we'll discuss it with Flynn. And if Flynn wants it, we'll get it. But if he doesn't, that, that's yeah. or, anyway. Or just bring someone in who isn't going to be involved with the first team and transfers. Bring like a head of academy in or something. Yeah. So yeah. keep it kind of separate. So have someone here you know looking so the academies you got the 18s and down they're structuring yeah. that and you've got flynn completely other side or doing even, his thing i'd even like the the this role that we're kind of imagining or creating to deal with like negotiations like if if flynn goes i want for example now would be the right time for flynn to go I want these four people to be offered a new contract. I want these X amount of players to leave. That's that's what I want. You go and execute it. So yeah, the, the, this made-up role that we're kind of creating has control over the budget on it. He's got parameters that he'll work in and would go, right, I'll, I'll make sure. Or if Flynn goes, I would like this right back or these are my like three right backs that I'd like go and make the, effectively the initial contacts and test the waters. It's that sort of stuff that I think the technical director can bring to it or the head of yeah. football or whatever, whatever the role is. And maybe Fullerton got a little bit kind of big for his boots in the fact that he only answered to Pomlet. Maybe we need someone yeah. who... Well, I think she not, be on the not answers to Flynn, time. but has to kind of do a bit of Flynn's bidding. In a, in a certain way, like he's saying, and kind of he's, he's there just to do a job and he's not there to change things drastically. He's just kind of yeah. there to kind of slowly make things better. Yeah. And and take a bit of the pressure off and do that admin. Yeah. And like you said, and, be able to cast an eye over the academies, the reserves, the, the kind of everything away. Let the first team be. You're not in, in involved with the recruitment, but you are involved with getting the the kind of deal over the line. One of the questions we had was kind of regarding that every kind of season feels like the start of a new era. Yeah. I think we need to get away from that idea. I think yeah. we need to bring someone in who isn't going to change everything right away. I think we need someone who is going to change little things. Yeah. And just kind of put the building blocks there. Yeah. Yeah, no, let's I, just work on the basics. Let's just yeah. get things going forwards. You know, large scale change like Fullerton was trying to bring in, it didn't work, and it doesn't work at this football club. It seems. Yeah. So let's just slow it, slow it down. Let's get a good person in that job, someone who is likable, someone who knows what job they're going for, knows who the answer to, and isn't going to, you know, disrupt everything. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's, yeah. And then that actually answers that question, which I'm then going to take on to uh, Josh Rayner for the final question of this. Do you reckon next season will be more enjoyable now without Fullerton in the club? Yeah. 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 Because Flynn, Flynn has had a, a decent, I'd say a decent start, but it's kind of, I, I don't blame him for what's happening the last couple of games. And if it mm -hmm. continues... I, I don't blame him for it. But what I feel that from the stories we've heard that not, not me and you specifically, I mean the fans in general, like I've tried to find out a bit more about Fullerton from certain people, but have not been out, not heard anything 
other than what's out there, I feel that maybe the environment wasn't the best at the club. Yeah. And I, I do think it'd be interesting to see how the players play the rest of the season. I, I, I don't know whether it will have a direct knock-on effect, but or, or especially at this time of the season, but I think if Flynn's the one that's driving the ethos at the club, it can't be a bad thing. Whereas at the moment, it was pretty shared. Yeah. Um, I don't think that Fullerton leaving can make things any worse. Yeah. So, yeah, it will be more enjoyable because I don't think it can get worse. Yeah. I don't think he was important enough for it to be a loss. Yeah. And then the yeah. players, the players have got to sort themselves out, to be honest. Like yeah. I'm a bit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit sick of it, to be honest. I'm a bit sick of this idea of you being a professional footballer and you're not wanting to win absolutely everything yeah. that you can. Yeah. I yes. don't care if you're going back to your parent club next week. You give everything you've got to the team you're playing for to do yourself a service. Yeah. You know, it leads to bigger and better things. I am. Um, Everybody knows that. I mean, I don't know if you listened to it this week, but the best got beat. Joe Edwards was talking about this and he was spot on. And it's definitely worth a listen, anyone who's, who's watching this. Um, you know, it, the, there's so many things in it that you go, yeah, that is right. Like, where do players go? They're, if, they're, if they're not doing well at Walsall, who are they going to? Mm. Like, where are they going after Walsall? And you, yeah, like you said, you kind of you play with that bit of pride and you play with a bit of, you know, dedication and being a professional footballer. Um, a lot of this we will cover in our sort of end of season video. I don't think now we'll do anything until sort of the final weekend of the season. Um, but I, yeah, I think that's going to be a tasty uh, video. I think. Especially I think it will be. You. But. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. It's quite a, a last minute recording. So cheers, Harley, for coming on. Always, always. Oh, my Alfie Bates story. Oh, yeah, you you promised us an Alfie Bates story. I promised you an Alfie Bates story. And do you know what, Alfie, if you're watching this, really sorry. So basically, I went to, I was writing for a website and I was covering Colchester Walsall at Colchester. And it was. Walsall lost, but I think results went their way and it was like mathematically pretty much impossible to get relegated. So I asked the question, do you, like obviously you're kind of safe from relegation now, but there is the unwanted stat of um, having the lowest league finish in X amount of years, whatever it was at the time. How, like, are you, are you all working hard to obviously not ha have that hanging over you and I don't we were, obviously we were wearing masks it was during Covid and he went on a massive bit of a rant about how the players weren't going to get relegated and I was like oh okay all right then and I think he took great <laughs> offence to me suggesting that they weren't trying enough to s survive but Alfie I didn't ask that and I'm very sorry <laughs> there you go so I think I upset him in so much so that he moved to another country a few months later. I think he did. Oh, that's a perfect way to end this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is why I shouldn't be allowed to talk to players. Rob is the villain. I am. Yeah, it's all my fault, guys. Yeah. Right, Harley, I will be seeing you in May. See you in May. See you in May, everybody. Bye.